Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sahar and today is going to be a really interesting video because I will be reviewing the Juno and Co sponge. Juno and Co? I'm going to be doing my right side with, this is my right side, with this sponge and I really want to compare it to a, it's super dirty right now because I just used it yesterday but you know, you know the usual kind of like sponge applicators because uh, this is like a velvet sponge and this is like a silicone sponge, rubber sponge, I don't know what kind of sponge this is. We're not going to limit it to concealer and foundation only. I really do want to test this out for bronzers and blush. So before anything else, hi my name is Sahar. If you want to be part of my family, be sweet and support. Sweet support. Oh. Please subscribe down below. Make sure to like this video at the end. Uh, make sure to like this video at the end if you did, and comment down below which sponge do you prefer. Okay, I just received. Okay, I'm receiving messages from my phone. Okay, let's just get on to the video. This is the size of the Juno and Co sponge. It is actually kind of the same size as the Morphe sponge, and it is the LA Girl sponge. I'm sorry, it's really dirty, but. Yeah, and then the shapes are different for each of them. So we have our ruler here, and it is practically about just a little over 2 inches. And that is the same size with everything else. So we'll see how big it is when it is wet. So these are now the sizes of the sponge. They do grow the same. It did grow quite a bit, so... From a little over 2 inches, it is now around 2.5. It is not squishy. You can see, if you compare it to the LA Girl, this is like super soft, super squishy. This one is a little, just a little tough. Yeah, and then you can see it wrinkles a little. Wrinkles a little as opposed to this one. It doesn't really wrinkle a little. It doesn't, it doesn't really wrinkle a lot. This one does wrinkle. You can see that there. You notice that there are fibers all around, fiber, which makes it really interesting. So now to put this all over my right side, and I'm going to be using the LA Girl sponge to do my left side, just because this sponge I use like almost on the daily, like I use this all the time, so I know how this performs, I know how I like it. And I just want to compare it to something that um, is I'm really familiar with. I'm going to be putting my favorite um, drugstore primer. This is the Master Pro by Face Studio. It has a green tint, but honestly, it doesn't um, reduce the redness of your face at all. But it's very moisturizing. When I had oily skin, I hated this. I never used it. And then when I got dry skin after my Accutane journey, um, my favorite primer. So it really depends on what skin you have. I look like some weird girl who just woke up. Oh gosh. So I'm going to be using one of my favorite um, drugstore foundations. This is the Revlon Color Stay Foundation. This is actually not my color. This is 180 Sand Beige. But I'm a little darker than 180 Sand Beige. So I mix in a little bit of the Cargo Foundation. It completely wiped off. I don't really, I, I have no idea what this is, but I know this is a cargo foundation in 4W. Let's get cracking. Okay. Oh, okay. This is basically how many, how much I use just because of the scarring I have on my face. So if I want like high coverage foundation, I'm going to need a little bit more. Okay. That just completely covered up all my scars. As you can see, I have a little bit of scarring here. I have more scarring here, but it's kind of gone. And I'm like, what? I feel like it doesn't absorb any of the product. All the product seems to be settling in these tiny fiber things. Usually I get this coverage when I put two pumps in, so one layer and then the second layer, like two layers. That's why I'm shocked because this is just one layer and I already have full coverage, which is weird because I don't, I don't usually get this coverage. Okay, okay, okay. 
Maybe I'm just having a good skin day. So we're gonna do the other side with what's left. We're gonna do the other side of my face with the LA Girl sponge. I know how this performs. So yeah, this feels so much softer on my skin. It feels so much more gentle on my skin. Already, I, I prefer the feel of this. This is just so much softer and more gentle on the skin. So you can definitely feel the difference when like dabbing it on your skin. This is tougher, but it's not hard. It's just it's just a little tougher. This is so much softer. It's like like a cat's bottom. That's how soft it is. I feel like I get more coverage here. Yeah, I feel like I have more coverage on this side as opposed to this other side. I feel like this sponge um, seems to absorb more product than this sponge. If maybe you can't see, maybe not. The fibers seem to catch a lot of the product. And then if you turn it this way and that, you can see that there's still blue. The blue sponge is still blue. So all the staining is on the fiber. Whereas this one, it's directly on the sponge. So you know that this absorbs some of the product. How they performed, I do prefer the feel of this, but I feel like you definitely save a lot of product when you use this sponge. I also really like this flat beveled area right here. I don't know if it's called beveled. I don't know if you can see, but I feel a little bit more dewy here. Here I feel a little bit more matte. Um, I don't know if you can see it on camera. This does feel wet. It feels wet. This feels dry. It feels so dry. This feels really wet. So same as this. This also feels really wet. So this feels dry and I'm thinking that's what contributes to like the matte effect. So I noticed that like looking like super close to my mirror, I have slightly higher coverage on this side with the Juno sponge. As for the finish, again, I feel a little more dewy here. I feel like it's because this retains a little bit more water than this. And I feel a little more dewy here. And then here I feel a little more matte. But that's for foundation. Let's move on to concealer. For the concealer, I'm going to be using the H Rewind. As you can tell, I use this concealer a lot because it's already like super like close to empty. I'm going to be putting my Juno side first. That went on freaking perfect. I have full coverage with this. The LA Girl sponge doesn't really give me high coverage when it comes to concealer for some reason, but when I use the Morphe sponge, I definitely get high coverage with the Morphe sponge. And I have a video on my first impression slash review on this, and I will be linking that down below if you'd like to see. I'm going to be trying this one with the Morphe sponge because I know that it's going to get more of this kind of coverage as opposed to the LA Girl sponge. So I tried to, you know, use this against this because I kind of get higher coverage with this, but I have even higher coverage with this. So I'm definitely using this for my concealer from now on. We're gonna be doing the contour and blush. We'll see how these two sponges perform. So I already did my brows. Um, I can't really see it on camera because you know, there's like this green box and I'm like, and it just follows me wherever I go. I decided to try this sponge out when testing out my bronzer and my blush. These two things I have been using forever. Today I will be using the Morphe sponge for my um, bronzer. So now taking the Juno sponge and then, okay. Ooh. Well, I was expecting this to perform really well because it's fibrous, so expectations met. Honestly, that was so much faster and so much easier than the regular type sponge. I think because this is fibrous, so it's kind of also it kind of also works as like a powder puff. Wow, it got a lot of product from the pan. I still prefer the brush though. Um, I think I'm just more used to the brush. Before I start anything else, I'm gonna be doing my baking. I'm using the Kat Von D um, Locket Foundation, Locket Translucent Foundation. Just because I still have some, and this is expensive, I did not buy it 
but it was given to me and it's really expensive and it's really good powder so I don't want to get rid of it. I have to let this set before I wipe them off. I'll be right back. See you later. Alright, so I am back. I just brushed off all the powder with this brush. Tapered dome. Tapered dome. And I absolutely love this blush. This brush. Let's move on to the Luminoso blush by Milani. We're going to be using the LA Girl sponge this time because I do use this for this blush. So that's basically what I do every day. You know what? I'm going to be using the butt. Okay, that's a lot. I'm just blending it in. With... Oh, but I really like this side. I just happen to be forget the highlighter. This is the Wet n Wild highlighter in Precious Petals, and it is gorgeous. I absolutely love this highlighter. It's one of my favorites. I'm going to be taking some on my LA Girl sponge. Oh, yeah. What I like about it being applied with the LA Girl sponge is since the sponge is wet, it makes the highlighter look so much more beautiful and more blinding. See that? It's like, oh. Yeah, we'll just try the butt side because I kind of like the butt. Because I like big butts and I cannot lie. You other butts can do that. Okay. Ooh, that's a different, super big difference when it comes to highlight. Okay, you can see the difference. This is the LA Girl sponge side. This is the Juno sponge side. So you can see... This is definitely more highlighting, more blending, and this is definitely more subtle. And I'm using the same highlight, okay? Um, this side, the Juno side, gives me more of the brush application vibes, um, and this side gives me like more of a wet application vibe. And completely understand why, I mean, this does feel dry, and this does feel like it's wet, so I understand why that's the case, but it really depends on your preference, whether you like it a little bit more subtle. I mean, this is not exactly subtle by any means for some people. But if you compare it to this side, this is definitely more blinding. So it really depends on your preference. I want to see how well it washes before I give my final thought. This washes a little bit better than this. I do have a face halo and it may because the face halo waters really well. If you want to see if the face halo really works, I have a video on it. Please be sure to check that out down below. Yeah, the foundation stains are still there. This Morphe sponge washes well and still maintains that beautiful red color. And of course, my LA Girl sponge. No matter how many times I try to wash this, it will always maintain its like brownness. It, it just never is able to wash perfectly pink. But I mean, come on, it's like, who even thinks about this? Like, it just, yeah, you don't, if this is not important to you, it doesn't really matter. I just wanted to add in that little bit just for, you know, to, for you to know how well it washes. I check the information and it says here that this is not, a, not exactly called a velvet sponge. I mean, it is velvety and soft. But it is called the Juno and Co. Micro Microfiber Fusion Sponge, and it is it retails for six dollars. There are two different like shapes. One is like a uh, like a one is one kind of looks like like that, and the other looks like this, like it's beveled. The Morphe sponge um, is seven dollars. And the LA Girl 2-pack blending sponge is $12, but it comes in a pack of two, so this is technically $6. Let's get into my final thoughts. So the Juno & Co sponge, I'm not even sure if I'm saying it right, Juno & Co. It's a beautiful sponge. I absolutely love it. It's great for foundation. It's great for concealer especially. I love it for concealer. I will be using this for concealer from now on. And it's also great for like powders, but you have to note that when you put your foundation, it might come off a little bit more matte. 
um, but you have to test it out with different foundations. So I, at least I have to test it out with different foundations. So I feel like you get more coverage, slightly more coverage with a uh, velvet sponge like this as opposed to other sponges. That's also why I feel like it's more effective for like concealers. And so I feel like it was said by me like 100 times maybe, 103, 108.5. It doesn't feel wet as opposed to the other sponges which you know feel wet they feel wet and um, they're squishier than this but this is also pretty soft it's just I feel like there's like a layer of velvet on top so it, it's kind of it feels a little weird but um, nothing too weird but yeah I really really do like this the only thing I don't like using this for is highlight, as you can see. Um, using a wet sponge does improve the, the, the blindingness of a highlight just because it's wet. As opposed to the Juno sponge, gives a more subtle highlight vibe, but you might like that more. So it really depends on how you like your highlights. It doesn't clean as well as the Morphe sponge does because the Morphe sponge, you can almost see no product left, only a few staining here and there. But this, you can really definitely see that there is still some um, foundation. But I'm pretty sure if you like use a little bit, because I just use normal soap, hand soap and water. Maybe if you soak this in a little bit in a water bath, maybe it will get the, the better. You'll get better results in cleaning. But I don't really mind this look because I kind of. I mean, if I'm gonna use it every day, I mean, I don't really mind. <laughs> so these two actually have the same price. The Morphe one is slightly more expensive. Do I think it's worth the price? Yes. Yes, it is worth the price, I think, for my skin. I suggest go out, it's just $6, try it out. It seems like a really, really nice and good sponge. But if you do have a LA Girl sponge or a beauty blender already, I don't think you really need this in your life. <clears throat> but it's definitely a great buy. Like, I, I think that you should at least try it out. Um, yeah, you don't need it, but... I, ew, it's nice. I, I like it. My next video will be about this, comparing this to a, not a knockoff sponge, but it's like a sponge that does not have the Juno & Co brand in it. So I just want to see if there are differences between two sponges, one that's Juno & Co and one that's not Juno & Co but the same concept, the same shape, the same everything. So And it's cheaper. So I just want to see if there's a difference or if, you know, it's private labeling. No tea? No tea? No tea? No tea. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found it informative. And please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and hit that notification bell so you'll know whenever I upload. And yeah, please join my family, my sweetums. I have no idea what to call us. We're just like, what, 100 subscribers? But that's okay. I do it for myself and for you guys. I don't know what to say. I have to end the video. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Blah, 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 blah. Love you and so much. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.